Brought to you by the Rugby Outlet Mall, equipping you for freedom and connection through rugby. Find out more at RugbyOutletMall.com. Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to another amazing episode of Grow Rugby. My name is Gift Gift Tommy Bailu, and Grow Rugby, the podcast where we interview and speak with people who have found opportunity and have if you ever found, created, searched for, discovered, interacted with, and developed opportunity via rugby. Uh, great stories that we have coming on, and today we have another amazing one coming through. Uh, we have Rashad Lipford from North Carolina a t He founded the North Carolina a t rugby team. That's another HBCU. We're putting the counts down, people. We're putting the pounds down. Great conversation. I mean, you talk about a person who is not just passionate, not just excited, but is completely dedicated to just getting the work done. And uh, we really go through it from beginning to end, talking about how he got started with rugby, what it's been taken to be able to develop this team, what has been some of the struggles that have come along with it, and honestly, where they are now. So, it's going to be something that I think you guys are going to enjoy this one in a real way. Um, obviously we've come to the end of another month. June is over. Um, and we're heading into a new one. It's been a crazy six months so far. And we have now entered the second half in the U S COVID is back up on the rise. So, you know, it looks like rugby is going to be delayed a little bit longer. And to be honest with you, it looks like it's going to end up being the same thing, uh, in a place like Australia just found out. They're starting to get new COVID cases, and we thought that they were in the bubble between New Zealand and them on uh, COVID cases being basically lessened or eliminated. But looks like we are getting ready for that uh, second wave for the U.S. I guess it's not really a new second wave as much as a continuation of the first. But stay strong, at least up until now, up until further notice. We're going to have Super Rugby, at least on ESPN+. Plus. Go check it out if you are so fiending or if you got to just use old footage. Hey, man, go do that. I'm a big believer in go check out Rugby Cinema uh, and go get another taste of the way rugby is presented through documentaries and feature films. Uh, last week we had J- J- James Brunson on, and uh, he was the head coach for the Philly Nomads, and they have a movie that is available on Amazon plus, on Amazon, and you can actually find it through the RugbyOutletMall.com called The Nomads, a great movie, uh, one that gives a little bit of a solid insight into uh, the development of this team. And, of course, please check out our documentary, uh, Singapore to Tokyo, any way we can, like, I'll always tell you guys, we have so many great reviews that have been coming in from it. So many people have really enjoyed it and took something from it. You guys definitely go on. You guys can check it out at uh, redearthfilms.vhx.tv. Or you guys can find it on at Rugby Outlet Mall at rugbyoutletmall.com slash products slash Singapore 2 T-O Tokyo. And, uh, guys, enjoy it. And, you know, obviously it helps us so that we can be able to make more great films and great uh, uh, pieces and content uh, for you to enjoy, especially in this rugby list time. And, of course, on the other hand, on the other side of it, uh, it's definitely an adventure that you guys will be able to take in. And it can give you an insight in places that you might not have thought about wanting to go to or you didn't realize that there was such a rugby community available there. So, I hope you guys get a chance to watch that. You like what I did there? I slipped in both the sponsorships without having to go sponsorships. I mean, I know I just ruined it and called it out now. But still, the point is, yo, it's something to go check out. And, um, you know, and obviously with uh, going to the Rugby Outlet Mall, if you guys hook up the merch, merch like to celebrate rugby, we want to thank everybody who's already bought merch from uh, HBCU stuff because that goes to helping us develop the HBCU Rugby Classic. And, of course, on the other side of it, um, it always helps to be able to create the networking connection uh, to be able to connect with other rugby people in a way that's not just on the field. So we just want to be there for you, be able to keep you informed, keep you lessened, keep you growing, keep you developing, and, of course, keep you satiated in and then after rugby 
in while rugby is not around and after rugby has started. So, anyways, I'm not going to hold us out too much longer. I know you guys get very tired of me talking sometimes. Uh, I'm joking. Maybe. I don't know. You guys do. But, hey, you know what? You'll deal. <laughs> but, no. In the meantime, yo, I hope you guys enjoy this great conversation, one that i had been trying to have for ages. It was perfect that we finally got it together and put some quick context um you know i met i met rashad uh actually uh as a result of my guy shane young from memphis inner city rugby and uh shane had actually told me about him uh i think the first time i created the hbc rugby class when i I made the first hbc rugby classic um and he told me this kid was like doing it himself and was learning along the way so um, you know, it was cool to be able to finally get a chance to talk to him and really be able to sit down and delve in. Uh, it's a kid that you're going to really want to enjoy. So anyways, without further ado, please check out Rashad Lipford, North Carolina a and Grow rugby, grow rugby, grow rugby, grow rugby, grow rugby, grow rugby, grow rugby. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Grow Rugby. I got another great VIP guest here for us today, coming straight from North Carolina a and and I need you guys to remember this name. This brother is about to be a legend in the game right now. Rashad <laughs> Lipford, founder of uh, North Carolina a and rugby team. Rashad, man, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to have man, you on. The- the pleasure is all mine, man. Again, man, I, I love what you're doing here, man, and I'm honored to be a part of it, man. So I'm ready. Let's get it. <laughs> so, look, I have to say, you know, the first time – let, let me tell you the story of how I ended up finding out about you. So the first time I had ended up hearing about any HBCU teams was maybe back in 2014. Okay. And all this had come up, and I would hoped to pull some stuff off, but nothing really came up. And then I think 2018 – uh, I got a message from a young lady asking about North Carolina a and and she, she was trying to put a team together. And we were like, oh, man, that would be great. It would be cool if there's a guy's team. And she was like, yeah, there's a guy that's doing that over there. And he's like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, for real? Like, what's the information? And so I think at the same time, I, was, uh, I just met up with uh, Shane, I think, for yeah. one of the first times coming down to New Orleans. And uh, uh, Shane told me, yeah, man. I got a guy from MICR who <laughs> started a team up at North Carolina Anti. I was oh, like, yeah, Wait. man. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, look, I, I was like, dude, this is awesome. And, you know, I, it's just been this process because for what it's worth, you know, especially in building this whole stuff up, what you guys have done and e- even the little bit you guys getting to play, getting to put the stuff together, the mere fact yeah. that your presence has existed has yeah. helped credify, has helped the credibility of developing HBCUs, uh, rugby teams and HBCUs so much. So, uh, you know, I got to give a lot of credit for you because it's made a, a lot of this explanation easier for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> so kind of tell me, like, let's kind of start from the beginning. Shot. So, like, how how'd you get started with rugby? Man, um, I it's crazy, man. I only I actually only played one year. I started my senior year of high school, man. I I just one of those kids, man. I wanted to kind of have my fingers dipped in all kinds of sports. And my best friend Sam, he played. Uh, I knew Coach Young, man. I would talk to him. I had a god brother who played for Coach Young, so um, it was just something I really wanted to try, man. My uh, Sam was just like, "Hey, man, just try, man. Just try, just try, man." And uh, what's crazy is I actually. I actually went to my first rugby practice, ninth grade year. Ninth really? grade year, I went to my first rugby practice. My mom was like, you crazy? You're not about to play rugby. So, <laughs> so you know, I, I revisited again my senior year, man, and I played my first practice. I fell in love, man. It was something that definitely that took root in me from my very first practice, man. I love what Coach Young is about. I love the sport of rugby, man. It's, it's an amazing sport to play, man. It's, it's so much fun, man. So it's just a uh, – 2017 was my introduction uh, introduction into it, man. And like I said, I just I love the, the I love the energy that Coach Young brought to it, man. And he was very excited to have me out there. So uh, part of what kept me going so much was that I felt so welcome coming in. So, dude, no, and you know what? I haven't seen haven't seen Shane Coach Young in action. It's impossible <laughs> not to be energized by that. Like oh, yeah. it makes me feel like I gotten old because I'm oh, like, yeah. yo, I need to get to your <laughs> level of energy. I thought I man. And- and he's so humble, man. He's like, oh, man, he you is. know, 
I'm still working. I'm still working. I'm like, Coach, man, you out here keeping up with with ninth, tenth, eleventh grade high school, you know, who are in their prime, and here you are, man, as young as you are, still being able to keep up. <laughs> Oh man! Look, I, I, that that man, that man is a beast among beasts, and I, I give him all the credit in the world when it comes to it. And to be able to see exactly like being able to see guys like yourself being able to come out of that program. So for yeah. you, kind of like that first, since you only did it the one year, but though you had a taste, you had yeah, a taste, I had a taste. Yeah. right? But you did it that one year. What what was the thing that actually ended up changing your mind overall? Because that, that, we're talking about a three year, four year period now that you were yeah. like. On the fence, I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's just um, I saw the doors that it opened. Me and so me and Sam are best friends. That's my best friend, man. I saw the doors that it opened up for Sam, man, and and you know I just saw the connections that he was able to make, and I just man, I saw his passion for it, man. And it was really man, he was man, seventy five percent of the reason I got into it, man. Every single day I'll come to him, he's like, hey man, come to a rugby practice, come to a rugby practice, and of course. I would go support him, man. And, I mean, Sam, if you've seen Sam play, Sam is a beast, mm. man, one of the best rugby players I've ever seen. So, uh, he just – he really helped change my mind, man. He he told me, man, he said, you know what, man, I'm going to bring you to a practice. <laughs> so, man, we, we went out there together, man. Like I said, and I had that – I got that – I got that second little taste, man. And I was like, you know what, man, I'm – I'm done making this just the dessert, man. Let's make this the entree, man. This is something I can do every day. So. Right. Dude, no, I love it. For for the sake of the audience to know, Sam is Sam Johnson. He's currently a coach with MICR, and he's also coaches around Tennessee, right? Yes. Yeah, yes, and so uh, I actually even met him, I think, whenever he, the MICR came for, to New Orleans to play yes. the NOLA Gold Academy, I believe. Mm. And so uh, this is a guy that is passionate. He went to London. He got on the London coaching trip and was able to go overseas. Uh, you see him. If you hear him talk rugby, this man is just like, he's dead. He <laughs> set his career path. <laughs> that's, that's his life. He eat, breathe, he eat, breathe, sleeps. He showers rugby, man. That's, that's, that's what he's all about. <laughs> Bruh. So I, I love it. And it, it makes so much sense. But, you know, obviously the full absorption of rugby kicks in for you. Yeah. But – there's a difference between being fully absorbed and then being like, yo, I'm going to go start this team. And this is after, you yeah. know, you've been in it for a year. Yeah. So kind of before we kind of go into what happened going into North Carolina A&T, like previous to that in high school, were you one of those people who had a habit of starting things? Were you like start or like a leader in clubs or something like that? Oh uh, man, I participated in a, I was just one of those kids, man. I, I love sports, man. And I think, what really kind of kick-started it for me was, man, um, I was the only golfer at PCA. At Powerson, I was the only golfer. I played golf for seven years, and it was something that I really wanted to take heed and kind of root myself in at high school, and I convinced PCA to kind of like kind of set up a co-op with other schools. So I guess that's what kind of kick-started the leadership thing because, you know, it was kind of just – PCA was kind of like, you know, we have what we – we have the sports that we have, and I was just like, you know, hey, I talked to Dr. Hunter, and I was like, man, you know, Let's start a golf program, man. You know, let's 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 see what we can do with the golf program. And um, that was kind of the start of it. And then I I started running track, and my track coach really kind of poured into me. He was like, man, you know, I really think you can be a leader on the team. And he, uh, you know, ordained me the captain of the team. So that's really what kind of pushed, kind of helped push me over there. Kind of like, hey, man, you know, I can do this, man. You know, like I'm a leader. Like you know, people right. just kind of flocked to me a little bit. So it was definitely just kind of those, just those people who kind of put me in that position, who kind of made me kind of who kind of brought it out of me myself, kind of was just like, man, you're a leader, you know, right. don't sit back, don't, don't straddle the fence, man, you know, be the voice, you know, uh, let people, be the voice that people want to hear, you know, be the change, so. Right, no, and you know what, that's, that's so important, because you know, so much, people always will go like, yo, I don't know if I can do it, obviously, we know yeah. the, the, the doubters, but I think it's even more important whenever you know that you have an environment that is breeding you to be able yes. to be in that position, yes. because it's it's one thing to kind of reveal it yourself, and that's that's tough as is. But then to be able to know that other people are doing it, and then to be willing to actually move forward with that, and, and to kind of make your own path and help have, have ever the other people join. Like yeah. I, I don't think that happens enough, but that it's such an important trait. That's such a blessing that you were able to have and had these great people that recognize that in you. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Oh, so. I mean, even with the golf, like what? Okay, I, I, because I, so when it comes to golf, I had a cousin who was very similar to the way that you were. Like he uh -huh. went to a school where nobody played golf, yeah. and then uh, he ended up going being on the golf team, and yeah. like he just kind of ran through. But it was just 
especially within black people, it's, it was just within the high school scope. It's so uh, uncommon. I, I don't want to say yeah. unusual, but uh, yeah. it's just uncommon. That's the perfect word to use, yeah. Right. So to be able to say even at that for seven years, so you started this yeah. in middle school. I, yeah, I started this, man. At a, I started golfing at a, a very, very young age, man. It was just something that my mom kind of threw me into. and um, I don't know, man. I just, I guess it was the, the peace and quiet that kind of got me, man. But <laughs> I, I just, it was something that I, I really enjoyed doing, man. And uh, again, man, like you said, that environment, man, my grandfather, uh, you know, rest in peace. He definitely was one of those that pushed me to me. He sat me down and he talked to me one day. He was like, I hear you playing around at that golf program. And you know, <laughs> I'm like, no, grandpa, I'm not playing around. I'm not playing around. You know, and he, he made me get serious about it. He, you know, he was just like, man, this is something that you, you can really excel at if you really put your mind into it. And, um, uh, it's man. And I'm just one of those, man, uh, if people pour into me, I take it for hardly, man. I, I try not to, I try not to have deaf ears on a man. If people take the time to pour into me and to try to show me something that I may not be seeing, man, I, I take advantage of it. So, that was just another one of those opportunities that my grandfather just taking the time to sit down and be like, hey, you know, they're not, as you said, African-American golfers are very, very, very uncommon. So, you know, when he saw that it was something I got into, man, he was like, he was like, that's it. You know, that, that, that's the way for you to make it out. So, like I said, it was just something that I really just kind of fell in love with again. You know, I, I have many passions, you know, but golf <laughs> definitely is on the list. I, I tell people, don't, don't make me choose because I get the line about which one I love the most. So. <laughs> it's like, I'm a complex man, all right? I, yeah, you know. I hold many, 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 many plates at the same time. Please do yeah. not hold me to one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love it. I love it, especially, especially so early. Like I said, whenever you are able to kind of find and discover these things whenever you are young, is it sets such a pathway. And yeah. sets, which clearly it did going into to college. Now, here's the next one. Obviously, you know, in, in, let's, let, let me kind of recontextualize this. Not that HBCUs have ever been a down. I think we've always, there's always been the hype to be able to go to an HBCU. Right, correct. But I think that the education of knowing what an HBCU actually has yeah. to offer has always been a little bit fuzzy for yeah, most people. Um, outside of like a little bit, I, I honestly, I think the last show other than I think maybe blackish to some extent, uh, mm -hmm. I think, um, is a different world. And that's from the early nineties. Yeah. You so, know, so that's outside if, your range, right? If, if, if you don't have people to be like, Hey, have you seen a different world? You don't know You're not going. what it's like to, 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 you know, to get to see what that HBCU culture is about. You know, if it's not introduced you at a young age, then you don't know. You're like, it's about college university. What is that? You know what I mean? So. No, that is exactly it. And, and so for you, you know, how, what made you decide one to go to an HBCU and then subsequently what set you up for North Carolina A&T? So I've been looking at, um, I've been looking at HBCUs probably my junior year high school. Um, I knew one, first thing first, I knew, that I wanted to get out of Memphis. I love Memphis. Memphis is home. Memphis has my heart. But, you know, just, of course. Got to get a change of pace. I knew that I, exactly. I knew that I needed a change of scenery. I needed a change of pace. So um, it was actually my godmom. She sent me a list of the top HBCUs. And North Carolina a t was number seven on the list. Mm -hmm. And I just took, I just took, I, I took a step on faith. And then I clicked. I went through their website, man, and I fell in love with the pictures. I fell in love with the campus, man, and I, I got to see pictures, man, and I was like, wow. I was like, this campus is beautiful. And actually, I'll take a step back. My older brother, Texas Southern University in Houston, Texas, my first time being on a – well, no. My first time being on an HBCU campus, Texas Southern University in Houston, it was amazing. My brother was an athletic trainer. We got to go to football games. I got the first taste of the HBCU bands. and. I loved the culture. It was the culture, you know, because us being African Americans, we have a culture that that sticks out. Facts. You know, when you want to go somewhere, you want to go somewhere where you fit in and you feel accepted. And, and what most people don't realize about HBCUs is that HBCUs are the cream of the crop. Right. You you want to see you you see the African American doctors, you see the lawyers, you see the architecture engineers, you see the therapists. You see all of those great people that you don't get to see, you know, not to downplay PWIs, but you don't see them at predominantly white institutions. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't stand out. It gets kind of either lost as a, an exclusive exceptionalism yes. where it's like, oh, that was just them, not like the others versus yeah. it becomes just the norm. And that's, that's a huge thing for the mindset of being different between going, 
hey, that is something bigger. That's something out of the usual. That's just something right. that is that is not. Not only is it not a norm, it seems like it's out of reach. Versus right. now being able to see it, it's like, oh no, this is just right here. This is the thing. Yeah, right. like I got classmates who are like, oh man, you know, I'm an architectural engineer. I'm like, wow, what? <laughs> I mean, and, and a lot of people don't know this, you know. And to all my A and T alum who may see this video, Aggie Pride, you know. <laughs> so, uh, man, one of the top HBUs, HBCUs that breeds uh, African American engineers. Right. Uh, it's amazing. I come across engineer majors all the time, and, and they just the way they care of themselves, man, the way they speak, man. And it's just everybody that I come in contact across that campus, man. It's just they have that aura about them. And, and another thing that really drew me to H to North Carolina a t was this alumni. I will go to an airport. I will be at a Walmart. I'll be at a Target. If I have my a if they see my a t keychain, if they see my a t hat, they see my a t shirt, can I get it at you, bro? <laughs> I'm like, oh. Not, and, and it's just, man, they, we, we love – our school, we love Auntie. We love Auntie and the love run deep, you know. Like I said, and here I was a senior in high school, and little did I know a close acquaintance of mine actually graduated from North Carolina Auntie. And when I told him I was going, he was like, What? You going to Auntie? <laughs> and he told me, and I was like, You know, it, it, it kind of, that's what kind of really brought it close to home. Cause I'm like, Man, this is somebody that I go out to eat with on a regular basis. We go to church together, we hang out, and here it is. He's an Aggie alum, and I had no idea. Bro. So, you know, A&T was, it just felt like home from the jump. So I, I feel like that speaks so loudly right there. Like, it's just like how much it, it's, I almost consider it almost like the rugby experience. Whenever you aren't looking for it, you never see it. It almost feels like you never see it. Now, I, yeah. I will say here in Baton Rouge, I get the pleasure because Southern is just up the street from us. Yeah. But everywhere oh, yeah, yeah, else yeah. that I lived, I have never been, I never felt it. Right. Didn't know about it. But then whenever you start to see it and you're just like, oh, yeah. wait. Yo, you're you you're an alumni. Yo, oh, you're an yeah. agency. I'm like, oh shoot. Like, yo, yeah. you guys, you, where, where you guys been hiding? Like, why? Why? Yeah, like, well, do we need to get a group chat, a Facebook right. page? Like, how do I? Can I? Can I get connected? You know, because like I said, I mean, and it's I, I look like I said, it's it's the HBCU network that right. does it. You know, you have Southern, right. you have A and T, you have Howard, you have Hampton, you have Texas Southern, you have you have all these great HBCUs and. You know, we have our little friendly rivalry, our little friendly beef, you know, but it's just, Oops. man, when you get to speak, you know, HBCU culture, man, everybody comes together. It's just like, you know, we're blessed to be able to, we're blessed, we're blessed to be able to have that experience. I definitely, I definitely think so. I agree. I agree. I like, I, I always give credit because I, I, I didn't go to an HBCU. I went to a PWI USF. Okay. And it, this goes back to kind of where it went on the credit because I remember at the time there was a thought of either going to Southern, but I wanted to get out of Baton Rouge. Yeah, uh, but okay. it was like I'm going to Southern or um, I think literally at my time, I think it was it was Morehouse. That was my mm. first choice because I was like, yo, Atlanta's dope. And uh, yeah. This was before <laughs> me and Atlanta began, had this passive aggressive relationship yeah. that came with time. <laughs> like, okay, Atlanta. <laughs> I want to be here, but do you want me here? Okay. Right, exactly. That, that, that's exactly <laughs> what it was. Like, yo, guys, like, why, why are we beefing? Like, I didn't know we had to be beefing like this. So it was, it was, uh, it was, um, uh, how it was not Howard. I'm sorry. It was Morehouse, and then it was Southern, and then at the time, I think I was just like, you know, I don't know if I'm, am I going to be able to be comfortable there. And I ended up going to University of South Florida. Little did I know that once I think maybe a couple years in, and uh, you know, I'm thankful for my experience, but then you started actually interacting and getting into the HBC. And like you yeah. said, it is a unique culture like nothing yes. else. Yes. And then the more you re look into it, the more you research it, it's like, okay, this, this has a feel. Like there's not yeah. just like a, I'm on campus. It's not just yeah. like there's a campus culture. It's like there is a feel. Like whenever people are walking around and they rep their HBCU, like it's, yeah. there is a moment, like you said, that network is real. That yeah. network is real. It's almost as much mental as is the uh, the verbal and uh, yeah. interconnected network that goes along with yeah. it. Yeah, because um, like I said, high school man, um, Lindenwood University of Bellevue. I spoke to Coach Pat back when he was coaching at uh, Lindenwood U, and mm -hmm. he reached out to me, man, and he was trying to get me there. And and at the time, I was in between, you know, because um, and I'll be honest with you, man, my my thought process is this right here, man: go somewhere, be a part of somebody else's program, right. go somewhere and start your own program. So, you know, for me, it was kind of just that split minute because Lindenwood University has an amazing, an amazing rugby program over amazing there. Amazing facilities, amazing rugby, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, I mean, it's an amazing, it's an amazing experience over there. But then again, it's just like, you know, A&T, 
do they even know what rugby is over there? You know what I mean? Right. So it was like, so it's just, and um, I was in between, and I, and I think what really sold me was uh, we had we have called, we have something called new student orientation, and I kid you not, I got out of the car, walking into the gym, and I and a sense of feeling as if I was at home. And now, yeah. not that this was my first time being in Grand yeah. North Carolina. This was my first time in North Carolina, and I and I stepped on that campus like you said. It's the feel. What's that? I was like, man, this is. It, it was like a little voice that was like, man, this is where you gonna spend your next three years. This, this is where you are going to spend your next three. And here I am, man, three years in, man, and I promise you, man, I wouldn't trade the experience for the world. Dude, I love it. I love it. And I was going to say, that field, you know, uh, I, I've always tried to, because I've had that going back to Nigeria. And I think the feeling, I think the best way to describe it is not having to think about. Like, that's what yeah. I always go. Is like, I don't have to think about this. Like, yeah. I don't have to think about my proximity in terms oh, yeah. of like, yo, am I gonna scare somebody off? It's just like, exactly. yo, we just know it's it's not just a, it's it's very innate and very yeah. innate, but it also I don't know, it maybe I might be babbling a little bit, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it's just man, get, the comfortability, man. You can see somebody speak to them and know that they're gonna speak back, man. That's <laughs> right. Weird, you know, I talked to, I mean, my freshman year, man, I had friends. I was like, man, you talk to everybody. Yes. That's the, that's, I mean, that's the culture, man. You see somebody, hey, what's up, man? You know his name? I have no idea who that dude is, man. But guess what? I hope he have a great day. <laughs> I hope he has an amazing day because we sat here and we talked and we conversated. You know, and next thing you know, man, we looking at him like, oh, man, I got to go to class. And like, <laughs> the next thing you know, you're like, man, which way are you going? Oh, I'm man, going to wait now. Hey, hey and, that, and that's how it starts, man. <laughs> so. Again, man, I trust me, man. I understand exactly what you're saying, man. That feeling of knowing that, man, you can talk to anybody, man, and a friendship is just gonna start itself. So, yeah, no, dude, and I think that perfectly weaves into you know where it came to bring this all together. You being able to start this rugby team, all right? Yeah. And so here's the interest. Obviously, when I heard about you, obviously it was after the HBC Rugby Classic. So at that time, it was basically Morehouse and Prairie View and I'm established. Yeah. And then FAMU was slowly kind of coming yeah, back. Yeah, I've, but yeah, they I've weren't, been keeping, I've been but, keeping tabs on. I've been keeping tabs on the HBC right. rugby community. So yeah, I know FAMU. They were there. And, and then okay, where they go? They 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 was, was, okay, there we go. Okay, FAMU, nice to see you on the mail. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> and so like right after it was just like okay, yo North. And look, I'm not gonna lie. Like North Carolina A&T was out of sight, out of mind. I think I had. Yeah. Uh, if you had asked me, it would have been either going up to D.C. area, Howard would have been more likely, or it would have been, like, maybe Alabama A&M or yeah. Alabama State. Like, one of those would have been. I don't even know why. It yeah. was just North Carolina A&T. But, you know, also you guys started getting good at football. So you guys also started. Yeah, talking. I mean, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like whenever, whenever it was revealed that you guys had started a program, Mm-hmm. It was just like, oh, dude, wait, this, this people really out here doing this. So yeah. for you, you get on campus, you feel this comfortability, but, you know, you're a freshman at this point, right? Yeah. So you get on campus, you're feeling this, you're a freshman, you're new. What made you go, look, let me go ahead and start this rugby team. And um, it, was, it was from the jump, man. Um, I, like to ask, I like to ask people this question, man. I ask them, what's your why? So when I tell them, man, if, if anybody is to ask me why I chose a and man, and I'll tell anybody, man, it's because I want to be the bridge that introduces African-Americans into rugby. Like you said, man, people think about HBCs. I'm like, rugby? No, a and is a huge, huge football school, man. Amazing football program over there. But we also have the potential to be an amazing rugby program. So, you know, it's kind of just they go hand in hand. So, um, man, freshman year, man, I got on there, man, and, I mean, this was something I was preaching as soon as I got to A&T, man. I, my, my roommate, man, my roommate, uh, rugby, every time every time we sit down, we eat dinner, man, rugby. I would meet his friends, man, rugby, you know. And it's funny because they tell stories now, man. They be like, man, the first time I met you, man, the first thing you said was that you were going to start a rugby program here at A&T. So I've been preaching this since before I got there, man. So it's just fresh, man. I, and, I, of course, I started small, man. It, it was my sweet mates first, man. I started with them first and just kind of started to branch out. And, you know, I was like, you know, hey, man, you know, I play rugby, and, of course, they didn't know, so I introduced them into the sport. And, you know, I got a couple of guys out there. And really what it was, man, when they wouldn't come, man, we had a field in front of the calf. I would go kick that rugby ball around, man. I kid you not, probably about three or four hours, man. I would have people come out there, 
you know, oh, man, what are you doing, man? I'll put the rugby ball in their hand, and, man, and <laughs> get them to, you know, throw a few passes in, man, just, you know, get them a feel for it. So it was kind of just like, like I said, man, it was really a step on faith, man. It was something mm-hmm. that I didn't know any. I was like, man, you know, I could go out here. Nobody could want to get involved. You know, people could see me out there kicking a rugby ball around and go, oh, man, you know, he just exercising. But, you know, I had people that would come out there, you know, hey, man, what are you doing? You know, or, oh, man, is that a rugby ball? You know, they never seen it before. So. Yeah. So, like I said, man, it was just something that I definitely – um something that I, I had in my heart. I, I knew that that's the reason I chose a So, when I got there, man, I was very, very adamant about trying to get as many people as I can together, man. As, and even as far as going just to let people know, like, there's somebody who plays rugby on campus. Because you have no, I mean, you have no idea how many people on campus play rugby but don't know that it's going on and just, you know, don't want to play because it's just like, you know – because they're not used to seeing people that look like them. Play. Right. So, it, it becomes an unusual situation where yeah. it's like, oh, it, it's 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 more likely that they don't than do. So there's not really much of a point for yeah. me to say anything about it. And exactly. then, again, it's this concept. Once you see one, all of a sudden, everybody just starts popping Everybody, up. And exactly. you're just like, yo, where where are all you rugby knowledge going? <laughs> <laughs> like, y'all been here the whole time? Like, right. <laughs> like, where, 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 where we at in 2017 when I got here? You know, oh, now y'all been playing for y'all play rugby in hockey. Well, come on, let's go. You let's want to go. go. So. <laughs> so, you know, what What was that like? Was So, you know, obviously, like, starting these teams, I, I, I respect it every time because it is a – it is a dedicated position because it's – especially whenever it's alone, you, you're starting it at, on your own because yeah. you have to be the tent pole. That means yeah. if you're setting up practice, you got to be at practice. Yeah. If you miss – like, it's literally the – the foundation that breaks yes. the whole house waiting to yeah. fall, you know? So, so um, go ahead, man. I'm oh, no, no. I was just going to ask you. So what, like that process, like what, what was the process getting into that point of actually getting the first guys together? Oh uh, man, we, I was a big social media activist, activist, man. I was, I was very big on Twitter, man. Like, you know, Hey, like any guys that are, uh, any guys that are interested in rugby or even just want to know what rugby is about, man. Um, and is one of those schools, man, we love our hashtag, man. The NK hashtag is, is always popping. Everybody's on. So I use that as an opportunity. And um, I actually had the intramural sports director reach out to me, man. And he was just like, you know, hey, you know, um, I hear that. Uh, what it was was I was using a and I was using Flyers, but I was using a and mm-hmm. logo. So he reached out to me. He was like, hey, man, you know, I hear that you're using a and logo for a rugby program. And we don't have a rugby program on campus. And that's when we kind of got connected. And I was like, you know, hey, man, you know, we don't have a rugby program, but I'm about to start one, you know, mm-hmm. and it wasn't a, it wasn't a, oh, hey, let's start a program. It was no like, no, man, I'm about to start a rugby program on campus. You, you know, intention, you, you, intention was set. <laughs> yes. It was like, you know, this is what I'm about to do, man. I'm a firm believer of speaking things into existence. And when I met him, I spoke it. I said, man, look, we're going to start. I said, we're going to start HBCU. We're going to start. We're going to have an HBCU rugby team. A&T is going to be on that list. We're going to have, we're going to start a rugby program. So we got together, man. And, um, Intramural sports, intram- interest intramural sports meeting. It was probably about, maybe about 150 students. Mm-hmm. And I knew when I got there that everybody was going to go sign up for flag football. Because of I've course, been doing some research. That's the premier one. Everybody, I, come on I, now. That's, that's number I one been, always. I've been, you know, I have my ear to the streets, man. And everybody's like, oh, man, intramural flag football, flag football, flag football, intramural basketball. I'm like, man, flag football. I'm like, okay, all right. So, talk to the intramural sports director. You know, I'll talk to him. I'm like, hey, man. What can I do about getting a table set up out here at the intramural sports meeting? He's like, man, you know what? I got you. We're going to get you a table set up. So we, we get nice. the table set up, man. I got the rugby ball sitting on the table. He introduces, you know, hey, we have Rashad over here with the rugby program. And, you know, we had a couple of people come on, come down. But here's what it is, man. I got up from that table. I got up. Because I noticed that nobody was coming. I said, you know what, man? I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to sit here twiddling my thumbs, man. And I went out. Flag football table, and here's what it did. They put me right next to flag football, <laughs> right next to. So I'm seeing everybody sign up for flag football. I'm like, okay, okay. So I get up, man, and I grab a section of the flag. The guys who are signing up for flag football, man, I and I give them the guy. I speak loud. I tell, I'm like, you know, you guys ever heard of rugby? They nah, man, nah, nah, man. So you know, I'm I, I'm preaching rugby. I'm like, man, you you want to be a part of something? You want to be a part of something that's gonna last? You want to become a part of a brotherhood? You wanna you wanna and have you want to become a part of a sport that's going that that not only challenges you mentally but physically, spiritually, and emotionally? Man, rugby is the place to be. You know, because I tell them, man, rugby is not about how hard you can hit. 
It's about how hard you can get here and get back up and keep playing. So that's what I was preaching to a man, and those guys, man, they ate it up, man. They Let's ate go. it up. Oh, like, I can run through this wall. I mean, <laughs> so, man, they, they, they ate it up, man, and they loved it, man. And I had a guy tell me, he was like, man, he said, he said, man, you sold me. He said, and I had guys, man, come sign the list. Uh, I got their information down, man. And, and, um, and the next step, of course, was my first intramural practice, man. And I remember it like it was yesterday, man. It was amazing. I had. I had, and what's crazy was I not only had young men, I had young ladies as well. This is, again, this is, this is now take you, this is sophomore year, freshman year, yeah. sophomore year. So I now have young ladies and young men interested in playing rugby. So of course I'm just like, oh man, this is great. You know, I'm appealing to both sexes, you know, because I'm one of those rugby is not just a man's sport. I know women, they hit just as hard as these men. So, right. you know, I was, you know, I, I welcome everybody. So my first intramural practice goes on, man. They get there, man. And, the first thing I do, man, is I introduce myself, man. I give a little spill about, you know, hey, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. You know, I play rugby here. And, you know, uh, fortunate enough to come into contact with these people and these people and these people, man. And, um, and I told them, man, and I, and, I, and I told them this is a commitment that I made them make from the first time they came out there. I told them, I said, this is the intramural interest practice for rugby. And I said, but the only thing I ask for you is that you give me 110% the whole time that you're out here. And I told them, I said, if you don't feel it, I said, if you're thinking about homework, you're thinking about what you're going to eat when you leave, you thinking about the young lady or young man that you're about to go see when you leave her. I said, you know, you don't need to be here. I told him, I said, but if you want to be here and you want to give 110%, you really want to see what rugby is about, you stay. And I kid you not, man, I had not one person walk off the field. Dude, that's I what's kid like, you not. I don't even know how you could. Like, I was still not even like, like I still want to run through this wall. Like, let's go. Nah, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> like, you know, so, man, like I said, man, um, and another thing, and another thing that I told him, man, and I told him, man, I told him, I said, this is not for me. Yeah. I said, this is not for the fame. This is not for the glory of sin that I started the program. And it, I said, the only thing that I want to do, that how I know that I have been successful is the atmosphere that I feel when I come to a practice. Right. To know that y'all have found something that y'all love. My guys that I have now, they are a rugby team. I know not because how they act in practice, but how they act outside of practice. Right. The way the oh. connection that they made. The, the time that they spend together, you know, these were guys that didn't know each other, didn't even know each other's last name the first time we came out there. Now here it is. They are communicating to me, hey, coach, let's get together, man. I know it's not a practice day, man, but let's get together and run some drills, man. Let's go throw a ball around. You know what I mean? So, Love that. You know, that's, that's, what, that's what lets me know that, you know, this is that – I'm, that I'm on my way to more success. Right. Because like I said, man, it's, it's not for me. Like I said, man, I just want to be the bridge. I did say, man, I just want to be the pathway to be like, you know, Rashad told me about rugby. He introduced me into a man. He made me fall in love. And now this is something that I, that I want my kids, kids to do. You know what I mean? So. No, dude. And that's, that's so important. Like, look, that besides the mindset, besides the energy that goes with it, like it's kind of the mixture because you do need to have somebody who's going to break the gates. You know, yeah. it's, it's not even like, it's not, maybe they're being, it's just a mental block. Like, Again, yeah. knowledge is power, and if nobody knows yeah. about it, it's impossible for them to know. But that's exactly. always been the thing that's interested me about rugby uh, is, unlike so many other sports, and the one thing I always hate is when people are like, oh, rugby better than fo football, football better than rugby. I'm like, no, 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 no. This, that's not what this is about. The thing that makes it so different is somehow about the, 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 the interconnected energy between the people. Like, and I think yeah. it has to do with how you treat your opponents as much as you treat yeah. your own brethren. It's like, everybody is still in the same family, but yeah. you know, we might be going against, I'm not going to let you beat me, but yeah. yo, I still love you in the end. And I'm going to go chill with you afterwards exactly. in whatever way, shape or form. But it's, it, it, it somehow works at a sensibility. And I think the same thing goes whenever you start playing it, especially whenever you get all these new people, it's that same sensibility. It's yeah. not like, you know, we're not – not that you can't compete for your position, obviously. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, position, But it's it's still, yo, I'm going to still help you get up. Like, I'm going to still help exactly. you move forward with exactly, it. Exactly, man. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, I tell them, man, I'm like, you know, I, I tell them, man, from the jump, man, when we first saw I man, I said, these are your brothers, man. I said, these are not just your teammates, man. These are your brothers, man. Y'all – because another thing that rugby teaches, man, that I really love is accountability, man. You're not only accountable for yourself on the field, man, you're accountable for your brothers, man. It's, it's your job to yep. go work over them when they go down, man. You're accountable for them, man. So, and that's something that I talked to them from the jump, man, was just like, you know, when y'all step out on that pitch, man, y'all have to take care of each other, man. Like I said, and I told them, man, and, and 
something that Coach Jones taught me, man, a long, long time ago about opponents, man, that respect that you have you never turn your back on your opponent. Yeah. If you, man, if, if they score, you don't turn around and walk back, man, because they kick that ball off in your back turn. They're but, gonna get it back again. Hey, yeah, start again. So, you know, so you you turn around and you backpedal and you always face your opponents, man. And it, and it, it's a it's a life lesson, you know. Every obstacle that you you want to face it head on, man. So why not do the same for your opponents? So no, that's so true. That that's so true. I love that. I truly love that. You know, so. When you got when you started playing, you started not started playing. When you started when you put the team together, you got mm. these guys together. Uh, what what was the first game like for you? So, unfortunately, we haven't been able to play a full match. Okay, as far as like you know reps and everything, but um, you got you some scrimmage. That's hey, we've look, got, we've gotten some. I'll call that a match. Yo, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll call it whatever it is. Yo, you guys played on the field. Uh, against either yourselves or against other people, yeah. right? Uh -huh. All right, perfect. So, um, uh, and I just, man, again, I just want to give a shout-out to Men's Triad Rugby Program in Greensboro as well, man, because they've been really adamant as far as about, man, uh, helping us out, man. They've really, um, they've really given us a helping hand, man. They've, they've allowed us to come in and sit in and practice this, man, and come in, and they've allowed them to immerse in their practices. And this is a, this is a men's rugby this is a men's rugby club in Greensboro. So uh, just kind of get their first practice out there, man. It's just – it was just – um. It was amazing, man, just to see the intensity level pick up, man. Because, you know, like I said, man, I, I have a small group of guys, maybe about seven to nine guys, man. So it's not a lot of us, man. So it's, it's, it's a small Smart. group, man, but they're dedicated. And, and, and I tell them, man, I wouldn't have it. I, wouldn't, I would rather have 10 guys that are dedicated to what they do than have 20 and not have half of them be dedicated. So, Dude. man, I, I took them out there to try it, man. And, Man, they were sponges, man. They soaked it all up, man. They soaked up the intensity. They soaked up the pace of play, man. They, like I said, man, and this is just a regular practice that they sat in, man, and they, they just soaked it up, man. And the men on men's trial rugby program, man, they, of course, they met me first. You know, uh, Coach, Coach Morris in Greensboro, man, he invited me out first, and he introduced He's like, you know, he let them know, like, hey, Rashad is trying to get a program started at A&T. And the first thing they said was, man, as soon as you get enough guys, bring them out here to our practice. So, you know, of course, I held, I, I held it up. And when I brought them out there, man, they just, man, like I said, man, they were sponges, man. They, they fell in love with the sport even more because now they were around people who pushed them harder than they pushed themselves in practice, you know? Right. It was a more so of a, oh, man, this guy, look, this man is 35, 40, man, and outrunning me, you know what right. I mean? So it was that, you know, Bro. <laughs> I want to keep up. So, man, like I said, they were sponges, man. Like I said, I commend it for it, man, for them going out there and not being intimidated. Right. Man, they were they man. They walked out there, man, like they own the field, you know. That's I, legit. And I told Come them, I said, confidence. you know, this is. I said, this is their practice. I mean, but I mean, like I said, man, the drills that they ran through, man, they ran through as if they had been playing rugby for years. Man. So it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. Dude, that's that's awesome, and it, it's so important because, you, like you wanted, it sets the culture. Like yeah. it sets the culture for what happens next. You know, whether you, whenever you graduate, yo, it's gonna be these next guys that are gonna be kicking in and how they recruit, yeah. and how they bring these people in. Right. But you know, it, it, it even stands out even more to the fact of like whenever you have these guys, like you said, it's better to have seven, nine dedicated guys than yeah. 30, 40 flagrant guys because you yeah. never know. It's it's that dependency of knowing, hey, I know you're gonna be here. I know yes. you guys want this. I know that there's something that you're aiming for. And the fact that you guys are still willing to practice and work to try and get yeah. there. And that hasn't even hit like gameplay yet, which will even yeah. absorb them harder. That yeah. makes it such a that's massive. That is yeah. massive. I mean like and I mean like I said man I, I love my guys man. I, I tell them man I tell them man I tell them man I I tell them, man, I eat, sleep, and I breathe rugby, man. If I'm not in class, I'm looking at rugby drills, man. You, Sam, I'm calling Sam. I'm like, bro, I need some drills, man. Help me out. I'm on YouTube, man. I'm looking at games, man. I, I try to get them together to watch rugby games, man. We go out and we go support triad. We go watch them play, man. So, yeah. like I said, man, it's just, like, man, it's, it's the dedication, man, because, I mean, how often is it, man, like I said, man, we haven't played yet, but I still have a full – a full seven guys showing up to a game. You know what I mean? Right. Just to experience it, just to see it, just to kind of see what it looked like, just to kind of get a taste of it, man. So, like I said, man, I'm, I'm honored, man. I'm blessed, man. It, like I said, man, I, I, it's, it's, it's hard to put it into words sometimes, man, to, to just express how excited, man, how honored I am to have those guys and to be doing something that's so much bigger than I am. So Right. Dude, and that's, I, that's, that's the name of the game right there. It's, 
it's knowing that you're you're picking up something so much more than what's just between the lines. Um, right. Dude, I like I remember it's funny whenever you were talking about like uh, whenever your guys went out there and they're they're running against the 35, 40 year old dude. <laughs> I remember I was exactly the same when I started playing. It was literally that. It was just like, yo, I'd go running, and I'm like, yo, I can at least sprint with these guys. Like, I'm, I'm not even worried. And then all of a sudden, you're just like, yo, how are you this fast? Yo, how are you still running right now? Like, this doesn't make sense. Like, I can't, I can't, I pridefully cannot allow this to happen. Yeah, like, but there's nothing know, I can do about it. <laughs> it's like, man, like, like, geez, man, guy, you know, man, shoot, you running like you, you running like you still like high school. I mean, like you say, man. Man, they, they keep them in shape, man. Like I said, man, and I just – I love it, man. We go out there, man, and try it. They push my guys, man. They push That's them, good. man. They, they throw them where they see fit, man. They're just like – they push them, and they're like, you can do this. You know what I mean? They're just – it's not, you know, it's not – it's not more so. But like I said, man, they don't ever feel intimidated, man. Try it is always more than welcoming when we come out there, man. They enjoy having us out there, man. They're – come out here this, man, you know. Come out here all week, man. Come out here every week. We're going to see y'all next week. We're going to, you know. So, like I said, man, it's just – like I said, man, it's it's that rugby culture, man. It's, it's something yeah. about that culture, man. If you can get somebody, if you can find somebody who's deeply rooted in rugby, man, and you can get them talking, man, y'all will talk for hours. Hours. Days, weeks, <laughs> months, years. You look up and two years in, I'm like, man, how did you meet them, man? You think, you'd be like, man, we started talking about rugby in a Walmart. And <laughs> here we are, man. <laughs> how do we end up, how do we end up getting drinks and just chilling out? Oh, you look, I'm not even mad at it. I'm not even mad at it. Yo, cheers, brother. Cheers. It's like, hey, cheers, man. Same time next week, right, man? Right. <laughs> <laughs> man, yo, I love it. That, and it's it's so true. It's so true. So it you know, it looks like you're 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 setting yourself up for this this beautiful pathway towards coaching, like legitimately deepening into it. And I'm sure Sam has given you a lot of pointers and talked in your ear a lot about this yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, for you, obviously, this next step, and mm -hmm. barring whatever happened with COVID-19 and everything like that, yeah. but this next step comes into almost probably doing more of the organizational and administrative stuff. Mm -hmm. yes. you know, have you been talking, you, you spoke about the, the head coach for uh, Greensboro. Like, yeah. have you been talking with them or any other coaches about uh, what that next move is? And I have been, I have been almost harassing the intramural sports director, <laughs> man. We, I mean... Um, we had a, we actually, um, we had the intramural sports director that I started with back in, uh, about 2017, he re transitioned to another position. Okay. So this was, uh, actually fall going into this spring. So spring semester right around, man, I was like, man, I got to meet this new intramural sports director, man, because I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking more of stuff, man, I've stuck a pin in it. I want to pick up where we left off. Right. So I meet the guy, uh, you know, I meet the new intramural sports director. I'm letting him know, he's like, Hey man, I'm Rashad Lipper. I don't know if anybody left you any notes any sticky notes about who I am, what I'm trying to do here at Angie's campus. But I just wanted to come talk to you, man, and let you know what I'm trying to do here. And, and uh, I'll talk to him, man, and um, he, he's, he's open ears, man. He, he's really engaged, man. Uh, he sat there, man. We sat there talking maybe about an hour, man, and he took notes. He got contact information down, man. So, actually, man, our next step uh, before COVID kicked in was actually getting ready to sit down and actually have a meeting with the intramural sports department uh, as far as the intramural, the, the intramural sports director, the chair, the guy who cuts the check for intramural sports, man. And I, I, and I put it to him like this, man. I told him I wanted to kind of set up like a pitch meeting. Like I wanted to really sit down and pitch rugby to them about how, man, how I believe rugby at HBCU will not only, not only please the alumni, but it will also please the donors that you guys have in because you guys are now showing their diversity. It would also help with the student enrollment because you now have something – on you now have something on a sports level that students can look at and be like, wow, A&T offers rugby. I play rugby. Let's go to A&T, you know what I mean? So it was kind of just kind of setting up a pitch meeting for them. But unfortunately, man, due to the COVID, man, A&T moved very swiftly with making sure that we got off campus. So <laughs> <laughs> They were like, we not even going to play with this. They, uh, they, you guys got to go. <laughs> they sent the email, man, uh, as soon as – um email about apparently somebody traveling back to Greensboro that had caught the COVID, man, and a t was they were on a frenzy, man. Students were going crazy, and a t sent an email. that was like, hey, you know, we're monitoring. We're doing what we can. And yeah. I kid you not, man, three days later, we got an email saying that y'all have to leave. If you, stay in a, if you stay in a dorm, if you stay in a campus apartment, y'all have to be gone by this date. No <laughs> ifs, ands, or but. Make the necessary travel arrangements. Don't tell me about what your mama can't do, what your daddy can't do. 
I'm telling y'all what we need y'all to do. So um, I got something unfortunately when COVID came in and kind of just put a halt to everything, man. But right. um, our chancellor, Chancellor Martin, man, has been sending numerous emails about us possibly resuming in the fall. Unfortunately, uh, the word is that we won't be doing any fall, athlete, fall athletics. Right, that makes fall, sense. Hurts my heart. Clutching. Yeah, I mean, you know, it hurts my heart, man, because, you know, my guys, I'm thinking, I'm like, you know, my guys, man, what am I going to tell my guys? So, um, but I'm still emailing Intramural Sports Director. I'm still reaching out to him, and we're still – we're still connected. I'm still trying to, man, as soon as we get on campus, let's set up a meeting, man. If we can't do anything this fall, let's do something this spring, man, which really works for me because when I started, man, you know, 15s, it's hard to get 15 guys, man. It's hard it's, to get 15 to right. stay committed. So I shoot, I strive for sevens when I'm always seven season. And I know the guys are going to enjoy sevens a lot more. You know, I love 15s, but I know they're, they, they're runners. They love to run. I'm like, they like the open the run, space. So I strive for sevens. So, Again, man, like I said, man, I'm, I'm reaching out to him again now, man. Like, hey, uh, let's do a Zoom meeting, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's not prolong anything, man. We don't have to have this meeting on campus, man. Let's let's get a Zoom set up, man. I'll I'll, I'll print out my proposal, man. If I have to sit down and have a whiteboard and so y'all can, you know, see what's going on, man, we will. So, like I said, man, I'm working very closely with intramural sports, man, because I'm first, not unfortunately, but there's a what I've learned since I've been there, there's an order of steps that things Of course. Things you, there's a process go. that has to go. And there's you a process. And the right people at the right time. And, it, and it's a long process. Uh, yeah. I mean, which I mean, man, and, and I don't mind, man, I'm all for it. Coach Young, man, Coach Young told me, man, he didn't start the program until his senior year yeah. in college. So here it is. I'm approaching my senior year, man. And this is – and uh, what I tell myself, man, I refuse to let it be a pipe dream, man. But like I said, man, I chose the ANT for this reason, man. The academics are amazing. I love the atmosphere, man. But rugby is why I chose a t because, you know, I want to, I'm one of those, man, you be the change you want to see in the world, man. And I'm all about leaving my footprint. And my footprint at a and I want it to be the rugby program. I want it to be a sport that some guy from Memphis, Tennessee, 10 hours away from home, man, came here and decided that he wanted to start a rugby program. So, like I said, man, we're – I'm taking the necessary steps, man. I'm talking to who I need to talk to, man, Um I have been in, uh, and I think what really speaks volume to them is, man, everything I've done, I've done out of pocket. Mm-hmm. I've done rugby balls, cones, water bottles, hitting pads. Man, shorts for the guys, man. Coach Young, man, he blessed us with shorts that I could give to my guys, man. Uh, awesome. We've had the Carolina Geographic Rugby Union donate jerseys for us, man. So, like I said, man, it's just I've been, you know, just because I'm not getting in touch with the right people does not mean that I'm going to stop. Man, like I said, man, it's their step. Stepping stones, man. Every every little person that I come into contact with, man, it's a stepping stone. It helps me get where I want to be. So I mean, I'm not, I like you're saying I know I'm not getting in touch with the, I might not be getting in touch with the right people. I feel like you're getting in touch with everybody who's correct. <laughs> like, like, I feel like you are taking care of all the right steps. Because look, that's that's sometimes always the hardest part. How do we get the jerseys? How do we get the yeah. shorts? How are we ready? Especially when it comes to training stuff, the balls, yes. the cones, yes. equipment, you know, and and again, you know, a, Big credit to, to, to Shane Young out of MICR. Yeah. I don't think we said it out loud. Out of Memphis oh, yeah. Inner City Rugby. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, he, he's, he's always willing to be able to help. And especially yes. when it comes to one of his guys, like, yeah. why wouldn't you want to see your guy develop and do something similar to what you're, you're doing uh, um, in one place, doing it again and spreading their love into another location that, that didn't yeah. know. So, you I know. Mean, he's, been, he's, he's been amazing, man. He's – um. I mean, man, we sat down and he talked, man. He said, and he said, man, I'm gonna be honest with you. He, he let me know, man. He said, if, he said, if, he said, if I know anybody can do it, it'll be you. I mean, and man, and that spoke so much volume, man, for only for Coach Young to only have me as a player for one year and to just to see that, you know what I mean? So, like I said, man, it speaks volume, man. Like I said, man, I, I love Coach Young, I love MICR, man. That that is where my home is, man. Everywhere I go, man, I. If I go home, I'm grinding some MICR rugby balls. Man. I, like I said, man, even at the intramural sports meeting, the first one that we had, man, it was an MICR rugby ball that I had nice. sitting on the table, man. So just to kind of tie everything back in, man, it's just – it's that like, I, like you said, man, it's the environment. It's the environment. Like I said, Coach Young, man, and um, I mean, and even Sam, man, like I said, even Sam as well, man. Like I said, that's my best friend. I, I tell him, man, I tell him, I said, man, I said, man, when I get everything together, man, I want you to come out here and I want you to help me, man, even if it's right. just – even if it's just him coming in and sitting in and on practice, it's just because I know what he I know what he knows, you know. And I right. know, like you said, knowledge is power. And like I said, him being right up under Coach Young, him being heavily involved with MICR. MICR has so many tools, man. They have so many connections, man. They they really prepare. They really they preach 
rugby. They preach rugby. So, like I said, man, I just want to – I want to introduce my guys into what I was introduced in to kind of give them a glimpse into, like, man, this is why I fell in love. Because I know when they meet Coach Young, man, when they meet Sam, they're going to they, feel they that energy. They're going to be like – I think I'm like, yeah, this is it. And I'm like, and so, you know, and it's going to be like, all oh, the light bulb is going to go up. And I'm going to be like, this is what I've been trying to get y'all to do the whole time. And this is what I've been telling y'all, man. You know, so, like I said, man, it's a, like I said, it's an honor to have gone through that program, man. Like I said, man, I love what Coach Young is doing, man. He's actually inspired me to want to start my own nonprofit. So, right. like I said, man, he's just, he's been a, whether he knows it or not, man, he's been a huge influence on what I'm doing, man, as well as Sam, even though I tell him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Sam, I, I tell him all the time, but I need him to be humble. I need Coach Young to really get this. I need Coach Young to be less humble. Like, recognize the awesome <laughs> that you, you have been admitting. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, man, like I said, man, it's just them taking that time to pour into me, man. Like I said, man, and uh, Coach Young, man, Coach Young actually, man, was, was the reason I got my coaching certification, man. He really helped pushed me over the edge and was like, you know what, man, if you, he extended that olive branch, man, he said, hey, man, I know you're trying to get your certification. I flew back to Memphis. I got my coaching certification in a span of two, I think a day and a half, two days. I kid wow. you not. I flew to Memphis. I spent a day in Memphis to get my coaching certification, spent the night, and then flew out the next morning. That's that, how serious I was about that's it, awesome. man. And, and Coach Young, man, he, he did what he needed to do, man. He said, man, you know, I won't be there. I'll be out of town, but he said, but uh, he said, I'm going to get you here, man. He, he he gave me the paperwork, man. He let me know what to do. He walked me through how to sign up for the course, man. And he let me know because I was actually trying to get at one in Charlotte. But, you know, travel arrangements, and he told me, he said, man, if you can get to Memphis, he said, if you can get to Memphis, they're hosting a the coaching clinic. Uh, he said, you know, you know exactly. He said, I can get you the location. And I know exactly where the location was, man. And I did it, man. Like I said, man, and that was, that was, that was the turbo, man. That was the, 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 the fire underneath my tail that I needed to really just like, you know what? I'm serious. You know what I mean? Like it made it all real. Got, it made it all real. It was something that, you know, I, I, I look at my coaching certification and I, I almost want to frame it. <laughs> <laughs> I almost want to frame it, man. Like I said, because that was, that was it, man. That was what did it for me, man. That was really like the, you know, Rashad, this is, this is something that you really have poured yourself into, man. Like you said, man, this rugby program at A&T that I'm, that I'm striving to get, man, this is something that I, I, I pour myself into, man. Like I said, man, I don't believe that there's 24 hours in a day because I'm not paying attention to the time, man. Mm -hmm. If I'm not in class, it's like I said, man, it's those rugby videos, man. And like I said, man, if, like I said, man, I, I love it, man. I love what I do, man. Like I said, I, I love rugby, man. I love my guys. I love what I'm doing, man. Like I said, it's a passion. It's a passion. I know, so. bruh. It, it, it is a passion and then some. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but that's, I, that, it, it's, it's, that's real. Like, I... I, I can't agree with you more. I mean, look, I'll even say whenever I started doing all this, um, mm -hmm. it was always very interesting to me because it wasn't it wasn't just simply the factor of, you know, being able to play. Like, being able to play was great. That was a great replacement yeah. for football. And then I always tell the story, you know, I went to pitch a tent, and, you know, that's when I got to see rugby culture in and of itself. Oh, and yeah, I was like, yo, yeah. this is home to me. <laughs> I was like, this is this is way. This debauchery and, and craziness <laughs> plus being able to play – on the, oh, yeah. uh, in a weekend and we all oh, man. <laughs> this, in two days this is, you mean what? to tell me y'all do this y'all do this how often this month, all, man. can we, get, can we make it three times <laughs> Bruh, so it was just like it, it was a perfect match and then obviously whenever you start to see uh it's it's weird because I, I still have to explain it to people where i go like look i know you guys aren't seeing how much rugby but there is but it's because you haven't had that like weird broken of the eye to go yeah. like, oh, that's a rugby player. And then all of a sudden you're just like, yo, why are, how is there so many rugby people out here? Like literally yeah. when I started playing here in Baton Rouge, I remember straight up that I was like, oh, rugby, whatever. Went to go see. I thought they were going to be a defunct team and everything. Uh -huh. And then when I learned that they've been around for almost 40 years, I'm like, bro, like how did I not even see an article? <laughs> I see one sniff. There wasn't like a computer like glitch. Nothing, man. There through. was no nothing. No blowing, no leaving the wind, or nothing, man. It was kind of. But the like, moment that it opened up, like all of yeah. a sudden, I'm like, "Yo, you play rugby too? Oh, shoot, you know rugby? It's like, oh, every, like there's so much connection. So it, it's it's all the elements have always been there. It's just yeah. like there's something, and I think it comes with the humility of of rugby. Yeah, uh, definitely. which I, I think is both a benefit, but when it comes to presentation, can be absolutely annoying. It's yeah. <laughs> like this—it's uh, a humility of not wanting to 
make a big deal about yourself but still be able to perform on the field you exactly. know and i think it makes it so that it's 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 not that people won't talk about rugby but it's not like the talk about rugby yeah. it's not like the because it's it's still you you're, you're you're chill outside. You go wild within the community. Like, yes. you know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's been interesting. And so whenever I started doing this, it was just like, yo, I need to be able to reveal this, this concept because yeah. this thing keeps popping up everywhere. And there's no reason why it should be this low. And then, of course, right. you have the global element. And then there's all these pieces. And I'm like you. Like, I, there was, a, like, I had always been a sports person. Right. Uh, I like sports media. But I was like, I don't really want to do another football thing. Like, I feel like there's three gajillion of these things. And it's yeah, it, an impact. You're not, you're not changing anything. It just kind of makes it about you. But then whenever you did it with rugby, it's like, not only is it like getting a chance to, to, to find out these stories, to get to know these people, but yeah. it does make it more than just you. You're actually trying to see this sport, which is an amazing tool to yeah. be able to discover so much. And then, yeah. you know, I can't wait for the chance, if you haven't, to be able to play going overseas. Yeah. And that just changes the game altogether because, yeah. one, the similarity in culture, and then, two, when, how you see it just kind of spread. You're just like, okay, now I know what I'm bringing back at the same yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. It, like, I guess, like I said, man, it's just, man, uh, <clears throat> again, man, when Sam had that opportunity to go to London, man, we were talking all the time, and he just – he poured himself into it, man. And like I said, man, like you said, it's just getting people to get that inside look of what rugby really is. As, exactly. As far as outside of the playing aspect, like the community itself, getting people to realize like this right. is rugby is through thick or thin. Like y'all can hate each other on the field, but again, be best friends when y'all get off, man. So it's just getting people to understand the bond that rugby makes. It's just, it's amazing, man. It's breathtaking, honestly, man. It is. A hundred percent. And, uh, and, no, it's why we continue doing it. It's, it's yeah. why it makes it like people are like, yo, why are you still doing this? Are you, are you sure you're going to? It's like, yo, I got this. Believe yeah. me. Like, it's, there's so much, it's, it, we're good. Like, this is, this is all the factors that you need. Like, it works. <laughs> it's like, it's great. Just come try that. Just get, like, come try. You know, just, Dude, just get. that's one thing I'll, I'll say this. I very, I've almost never run into somebody who played rugby and then comes out of it being like, yo, I, I didn't like this at all. Never. I've never seen it. I've, had, I've never seen it. I've seen people who are like, I don't know if my body can take this anymore. Yeah. Like, I might be breaking down, but they're like, I still want to try and get, like, yeah. that little – I, I want to get that little hit. Let me go get a little run inside. You know, you know yeah. Like I said, I mean, because I have about – maybe about – I want to say about three guys who played before. Right. But the rest are all – they're all – that's got to help a little bit, too, to be able to have some it does, guys. I mean, it, it, it does, definitely, man. It, it makes my job a lot easier, man. They are my leaders. I point to my leaders, man, because they know what the sport is like. You know what I mean? If I ever need to take a step back to go take care of something, man, which I rarely do, but if I, you know, or there's some practices, man, I let them leave. I, you know, I take a step back, and I'm like, you know, y'all have played before, man. Y'all know drills, man. Let's, you know, because, again, like I said, man, it's, I want them to get comfortable with each other, I, and, and, and I – and I think the biggest, the biggest thing is that these guys are looking at me and they're like, you know, I mean, the majority of them thought I was seniors getting ready to graduate. <laughs> and I had to tell them, and I was like, no, nah, man, I'm like, you're a sophomore, I'm a sophomore, man. We're like, coach, what? Like, coach. I'm like, no, nah, man, we're the same age, you know? And, and so, you know, it, it, it's crazy, man. Like I said, I had them, they were like, man, coach, you ain't graduated too. I'm like, no, nah, man, I'm doing the same thing y'all are doing. Like, you know, like, I'm we're like, building together. We're, we're, like, we're literally in this together. <laughs> like, like, yeah, I know the college students struggle, so trust me. Y'all say I got homework to do when y'all leave here. I do, too, okay? I got a project due in the morning. I'm going to be up all night. But it's okay, you know? So, um, like I said, man, it helps having those guys, man. Um, they bring that intensity, man. They, 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 if the guys are goofing around, man, they get them back on track, man, without, a, without, a, without any hesitation. And they listen to each other, man. They listen to me. So, man, like I said, man, it's, it's a great experience, man. Like I said, and I just. I love that I was able to bring those guys together. I and mean, like I said, man, it just – I love to see them interact, man. They hang out all the time, man, homecoming. They're with each other, which makes me right. so happy, man. They're, they're with each other. They're with the rugby team, and they're hanging out, you know. So, like I said, man, it makes me proud. It makes me proud. Dude, I'm happy to hear that. So, you know, kind of kind of wrapping this down a little bit, you know, for you, Rashad, like – you know, you, you've set, you've, you've really set the foundation and obviously yeah. COVID creates a little bit of a disruption, but disruptions yeah. are only as limiting as we allow it to be. You know, you iterated on it a little bit, but you know, what, what is like really the, the visions that you have moving forward 
with this? What's what's the next move? Say you guys are able to get back on campus and what so, you want to do coming up. My next move is, uh, <clears throat> of course, uh, my next move is really just is on an administrative level. You know, mm -hmm. I've been on the foundation level. I've set the foundation. My guys, we practice twice a week. They show up on time. They leave on time. We, uh, it's a set thing. We get the field space. So my next step now is, man, reintroducing it to administrator because it's been introduced before, but we haven't had the thorough conversation. So mm -hmm. now it's kind of just like, a, you know, sitting down with them and kind of just getting it together. Like, hey, man, you know, y'all told me I had to be self-sufficient. We've been doing this since 2017. I've been self-sufficient. You know what I mean? Um, you say that my guys need to have the proper grades. Grade check on my guys. They have the proper grades. You know, their grades are in order. You know, you say that my guys need to sign these forms, sign these liability waivers, you know, whatever information that y'all need. Here it is, man. I present it to them. So, like I said, the next step now is is um, it's really just speaking with them and just kind of giving the official pitch, man, and really just trying to either get the thumbs up or the thumbs down, man. And I, of course, I'm praying for the thumbs up, man. I, uh, I'm praying, man. I, I pray as hard as I can, man, for the thumbs up, man. And, and I think once I pitch it to them, man, they're going to see my vision and they're going to see the passion. So, that's definitely my next step, man, because once it becomes – once it's administratively approved on campus as far as, like, it's like, all right, y'all are here. Y'all have been self-sufficient. Right. Let's get it together. I can move into getting my guy sipped. Um, I've been speaking with – I've already talked to Nisgro. Um, he's been very adamant about sending me emails, man. He told me he's been giving me option A and option B, like, hey, you know, if A&T doesn't do this, get your guys together, man, and you can still do this. And y'all can still, you know, it not be uh, – it's never going to be a wage, but it's kind of just like you guys are still achieving the same goal. So, right. like I said, man, my next step right now, like I said, man, is definitely talking to administrators and uh, really just trying to get them to see my vision and see my passion, man, like I said, and just and just finally getting the okay. Like right. I said, man, because I, I, you know, I know I'm going to get it. <laughs> I, you know. <laughs> no, you uh, look like – it, it really is – it really is in the presentation. Like – and and you have the presentation, like you got that energy, and they know all of the even the fact that you know what you are the the little bits, you know the details makes a difference because from there, what the the issue that people usually have is it's either they don't know, really know the details that well, and they have sort of the energy, but it's kind of BSing energy, or they uh they they know the details, but they bring no passion to it so yeah. nobody's convinced it's kind of just yeah. like oh okay and well like, i mean hey, it's not like, that big a deal so yeah you know, we're like, good. hey rugby you know and i'm just right. like, no, I'm like hey rugby you know what about it you know let's do it so like i said man, it's it's man it's a it's it's a process man but i i, mm. I say t to p man you have to trust the process and i've been like i said man, this is something i've been doing since 2017 i've been trusting the process man uh like i said man i'm i'm ready to see it manifest full fold uh, like I said, man, I see little bits of manifestation here, man. But like I said, man, it's, it's – uh, I feel it coming, man. I feel really good, man. I have a really good energy about it, man. I feel like that it's really going to happen, man. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see what the next step is. And like I said, COVID is not going to stop me, man. You know? <laughs> it's not going to stop me, man. Uh, uh, like I said, man, I'm excited. Like I said, I'm I'm reaching out to intramural sports directors, man. We're emailing back and forth trying to – like I said, the next step now is to, hey, man, everybody using Zoom. And let's set the Zoom meeting, man. Let's – you know, because I'm all about planning ahead. You know, you guys right. don't want to do anything for the fall. Let's make steps for the spring. So, no, and, and that's that's legit. You know, so Rashad, tell them where can they find you? Where where can they be able to to find you? Talk to you a little bit more about this, or uh, help them help them understand what NCA NCAT rugby is all about. <clears throat> um, you guys can. We unfortunately do not have a Facebook page yet. I mean, it's in the works, but you guys can contact me directly. On Facebook, uh, it'll be uh, just first and last name, Rashad Lifford. Feel free to send me uh, text messages, man, Facebook messages, emails. You guys can post, do whatever you guys need to do, man. Let me know that you're interested. Um, I'm looking for support, man. Any support that I can get, I'll take it. So, um, uh, actually, man, we can work something out to where I can leave a link below that will direct them straight to my Absolutely. Uh, straight to my Facebook page. And like I said, man, um, any alum that are reaching out, man, y'all know how it is. Aggie Pride, it runs deep. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, man. Um, like I said, man. This is this is a blessing, man. I, I'm definitely looking forward to the exposure this is gonna have for AMT's rugby program. So, dude, I I love it. I can't wait to see you grow mainly because I need you to come out to the HBCU rugby classic. I, am, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I want you out here at the HBC rugby. Like, yo, like let's get this together. I want to get this going. Prairie View, uh, Prairie View, and Morehouse need to know that. Power, all right. <laughs> yes, they need to know. Like I said, man. I, like I said, man. I, um, 
of course, man. I, like I said, man, I, I keep up with the HBC Rugby Classic, man. Oh. I, I watch, I watch as many videos as I can, man. I was, oh, dude, I appreciate. I mean, it. I was honored to see that MITR was able to come down, man. Like I said, man, that that really hits home for me. I love MITR. I love what they do, man. So of course, like I said, man, and Coach Young mentioned you to me freshman year, man. He was like, get in touch with Gibbs. I was like, man. Of course, I was like, Coach, I'm, I'm on it, Coach. You only got to tell me one time, man. So, like I said, man, it, it is truly an honor to be here speaking with you, man. You just don't understand, man. Like I said, man, I really appreciate it, man. I love what you're doing, man. You have my support tenfold, man. Anything you need me to do, can I get some shirts to rock, <laughs> some hats, some lanyards, and stuff, man. We can work something out, man. But I'm supporting, man. You have my support, full folks. I appreciate you, and I got you, man. No worries at all, <laughs> bro. I got you, uh, dude. No, no, that that really means a lot, and uh, uh, I and obviously I said it, but truly the feeling is incredibly mutual. So, um, dude, I, I really do appreciate you coming through. I am Thank not you. gonna lie; this has been one that I was been looking forward to for do, the better man. part of a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we can finally get together, man. I am, man. I'm honored that we can get together and make this happen. Like I said, this is this is gonna be great. Oh, uh, absolutely, man. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, man. You have a great one. Yo, I mean, how can you not get excited, man? Like, I'm so ready and happy to be able to see what these guys are gonna be able to do once uh, COVID comes back. Obviously, uh, we're starting to see a lot of schools start to cancel their fall sports and stuff like that. So. The time for whenever, you know, we're going to see uh, these programs be able to come back with, uh, at least from the collegiate level, is, is, is hard to tell. It's hard to tell. But I know they're going to come back with strength. They're going to come back with gusto. But I really thank you, Rashad, for coming through, for being on the podcast, man. This It was a, a meaningful one. And thank you, everybody, for taking the time to just listen and just take it all in and, and just add to the guests. And look, you know, it doesn't stop there. Please go check out some of our other podcasts. Last week, I told you at the beginning, we spoke with James Brunson of the North Philly Nomads. Um, Prior to that, we had Matthew Provost with Prairie View A&M Rugby, another HBCU. Uh, Nicholas Walcott of the Chicago Griffins, a great story of uh, going from a D1 athlete all the way to a professional rugby player to where he is now. I spoke with... Uh, USA Rugby Sevens women's star uh, Chetta Emba, uh, fullback for the women, not just sevens, sevens and fifteens. Um, talked with Ram Edding of the Grey Wolves, the first predominantly black rugby team here in the U.S. Um, Charity Williams of Canada Sevens Olympic gold medalist. Uh, Saifuddin Safir, Blaine Scully, uh, Angela Elena, Chise Bailu, Phil Thiel. Raheem Vital and Mike Toussaint. Yo, we've gotten so many great guests. Uh, Naya Tapper, Dave Rhymes, Kyle and Tiana Gramby. You guys really don't want to miss it. And these stories stick regardless of the times that they're in because they are not just rugby stories. They're real stories. They're our stories. Uh, it's within the community and, and it completely shows how it weaves in all walks of life from party to charity and everything be ever between so i hope you guys continue to enjoy it also just so you know because i always remember i'd never tell about this you can also catch the videos of the podcast on our youtube channel gift time uh youtube.com slash gift time rugby network uh and you can catch the full podcast on the youtube be able to see everybody from from that and uh definitely comment and subscribe we post it on fridays uh, when we drop it, Fridays of the week, so uh, you can see everything, and of course, all that we have in our content bed uh, in the Gift Time Rugby uh, YouTube page. Uh, it's a little bit of everything from skits to games, uh, interviews, stories, and more. So we're always trying to be able to give you something to be able to add on and pr- create value for you, and to be able to use it for uh, future purposes, and and to be able to continue to incite within yourselves. Um, and guys, uh, again, I really appreciate it. Please, if you do like this, please like and subscribe. Um, please review it on our podcast channel, uh, not on our podcast channel, either on Apple or Google or anywhere that you 
are listening to, please leave a review or uh, five, four, three, two, one stars, whatever you feel like it is, good or bad. I want to hear from you guys. Um, it allows us to be able to create more and more stories. And of course, we'll be back again for next week. You guys stay tuned. Again, thank you so much. And remember, continue to be happy, continue to be healthy, and know that you are highly favored. You have a great one. Cheers.